Welcome to the Wooly World of West Knits, episode eight. It's been a couple months since the last one and there's a lot going on. There's new shawls, new socks. We got the year of socks going on. There's a new cardigan that just came out and the pup knits. I just was talking about all these dog sweaters maybe a year ago when I first started doing the Wooly World of West Knits episodes with you all. And finally I wrote the pattern and not only did I write the pattern, I got inspired and I just, just like with my socks, I get addicted to one thing and you're getting all these dog sweaters this year. So we've got West Knits shawls, sweaters, hats, blankets. I was like, what else can I knit? I've knit short shorts, I've knit leggings. I even knit a hammock in college. So it's like, what haven't I knit? Dog sweaters, they're here. So Brioche, Stitch, are you ready? Are you ready to show off your West Knits Pet Knits? Number one, the first annual collection. Well, maybe it's annual. It has to be annual. You're too cute for it to be a one-time wonder. So Brioche and Stitch. Stitch, show off your sweater. Show off your sweater. Look at that. Look what I made for you. This is the striped pup sweater, and this is the first sweater coming out in the West Knits Pet Knits ebook. How cute is that? Oh my gosh, a sweater almost as cute as your squishy little face. Brioche, you like rolling around in that sweater, don't you? My trick is to make Stitch the small sweater first and she's like my prototype model. Cause if I make a boo-boo, I just rip out and it's a tiny sweater. But Brioche, you're freaking big. You need more yarn. Daddy needs to buy more yarn to cover all this goodness. So he's wearing this blue color in the stellar colorway from Life in the Long Grass. Stitchy, you're pushing off everything. You're going crazy. And Stitch is wearing the necromantic colorway from Undercover Otter with La Bien Aimee's iconic yellow brick road. And they're just too cute. I need to knit you more colors. And I even put a little harness hole on their sweaters in the back. So the instructions for all these sweaters, there's lots of customization notes. So if you wanna put your harness under the sweater, you could poke the ring of your harness through. Stitch, you're going crazy. You love your pup sweater, don't you? You look so good in that hot pink. I think your brother needs a hot pink sweater too. What do you think? Will you share your pink color with brioche? Yeah. Will you share some yarn? Maybe I could make you the same sweater, but reverse the colors. I think I'd even have enough yarn with these small sizes. So there's nine sizes in all these brioche, uh, not brioche, but the Pet Knits collection. So there's nine sizes in all the patterns and you're gonna get six total patterns. So do you wanna see what I've been working on? This is what I've been doing all like February. I made just coordinating sweaters for each of them. So you're gonna get the striped pup sweater first in the collection. And then coming up next, there's gonna be a brioche pup sweater. This was the original one I worked on. And look at this, this was one of my first ones. Can you believe this used to fit Stitch? Stitchy, get over here. This used to be yours. Do you want a treat? You want a treat? Come here. Get over here. This used to fit you. That's the sound, that gets them. That's, that's their modeling reward. All right, so the brioche pup was my first sweater and it was just so fun to make those beautiful stitches. So this will come out in the collection. What are you talking, are you talking back to me? The brioche pup will come out in the collection and those of you in the last episode that asked for a dog sweater workshop, guess what? You're getting it. We just wrapped up filming. You were stars of your first West Knits workshop. Are you ready for more treats? And you'll be getting that workshop later in the month of April. Towards the end of April, we'll do that workshop. Yeah, you just love snacks. And then the ebook will roll out with pattern updates throughout the spring and summer. So you've got the striped pup sweater, the brioche pup sweater will come for all you brioche nuts out there like me. And we've got a Dustlin dog sweater that's going to be in the collection. This one's really fun to coordinate with your Dustlin sweaters and your cardigan, which I'm going to show you later in the episode. There's going to be a bubble pup sweater. Can you imagine this? So, so they'll all come out in like spring and summer. I didn't want to release them all at the same time because yeah, that's just like too overwhelming to knit all of them at the same time. So we'll knit one and a few weeks later we'll knit the other one and they come in all sizes. And I'm really proud of the pattern because there's lots of customization notes in it. 
it, I was thinking how to write a sweater for dogs when there's like short dogs with long legs, like short dogs with long legs, there's long wiener dogs with short legs, they're big in the chest, skinny in the waist, or skinny in the chest and big in the waist. So I wrote nine base patterns, base sizes, but in every section there's notes to help you guide how to custom fit those proportions for your pooch. So if you need to knit it longer or if you need to contour the waist, there's these optional decrease rounds to have these couture little creations for your pups. So lots of fun patterns. There's gonna be a marled one and even a faded sweater in the collection. So you can get the West Knits Pet Knits ebook now on, well not now, on April 4th if you're watching this before April 4th. Otherwise on April 4th is when the ebook comes out with the first sweater and then you can have all these friends online that match you. And then we can share our pictures and get inspired. And you won't be the only one cuddled up in cuteness. You'll have all these friends in sweaters too. So I want to see all your photos with your dogs or knitting a friend. If you're knitting a friend's dog a sweater, I want to see all those dog sweater photos. This is just a new era of West Knits. We're going to transform everything we love in the West Knits world into dog sweaters. So that's the preview of the collection and I want to hear from you if you've knit a dog sweater before and if you've knit some West Knits projects and you want to knit some more dog versions, what West Knits ideas do you want to see puppified? Do you want a Pierre Pup sweater? Do you want like cabled sweater? That would be cute for winter. What kind of shawls or sweaters or hats or stitches in the West Knits world do you want to see on your dog? So let me know in the comments down below and I'll get inspired and start working on West Knits Pet Knits 2. Okay, so West Knits Pet Knits 1, it has six patterns and uh, we'll do another batch of dog knits later in the fall and winter. I'm addicted. Yeah, socks were my new shawl and now dog sweaters are my new socks. But I'm still working on everything. You know, if you're watching this, you're a diehard knitter and yeah, you can't just knit one thing. You got to have a project for like every mood and dog sweaters, I feel they just take me outside of myself more because you don't think about what colors do I like or what would look good on me. You get to make it for this little creature that like honestly doesn't care. You know, it's not, you know, it doesn't hate any color. So you can really try different textures and colors on your dog and they're not going to know what's going on. So it's your chance to be brave and be playful and really experiment with new yarns and some new stitch patterns. So yeah, that's one type of project, those dog sweaters. And we're still going with the socks. So if you're signed up for the West Knits Year of Socks, these were the March socks, the woven check socks, which I think are my favorite ones yet. I was really looking forward to this release because I love how simple and graphic and crisp these socks are and that woven checks pattern it's one of those magical stitches that you look at it and you're like whoa is that intarsia or it looks really complicated like how the colors weave in and out of each other this is the wrong side it's just stripes stripes and slip stitches and I just love the woven effect and I'm starting to play with this woven stitch pattern more in some other shawl ideas you'll see later this year taking those stitches a little bit longer with bigger pattern repeats. But I'd love to see this as a sleeve. What do you think? Would that make a good sweater sleeve or maybe a jacket? Ooh, a hat. I should do a hat. That would be really cool. Graphic hat. I'm always, yeah, I always need another hat. And so that was the March socks. And in West Knits Year of Socks, the April socks coming out soon. Or if you're watching this later in April or later in the year, these are already out. These are the painting honeycombs socks, which were the first sock pattern that really launched the whole collection because I was working on my honeycomb socks in a hot pink colorway and I put it aside. Do you know those projects you have where you just um, get distracted? Or I like to say I get inspired, okay? I don't like to say I abandon my projects. I like to say I just caught the inspiration, just caught the whiff of inspiration from something fresh and new. Uh, I don't, I never abandon anything. It just lingers. It doesn't get left behind. It just gets, you know, 
just put aside. So that was the honeycomb socks for me. But my friend Linda picked up those socks and finished them and uh, gave them to her wife, Hjordis. And they just looked so freaking good. And I got jealous of those abandoned or put aside socks. And so I, I, I needed another pair. So I had these yellow ones and these are I think a little bit better fit. Those pink ones I thought were for me were a little bit small. And this is the next size up. I think this is the size four that these are knitted in. And this is with Undercover Otter Squirm Sock, which is one of the best sock yarn bases because it has a good nylon content. It's really durable. And it's like the trampoline of sock yarns. It is so bouncy and it really fills in the texture. You know those sock yarns or some yarns where they feel crisp and maybe a little bit bouncy in the skein, but you knit them and they're just a little more slinky or a little more flat. You know, you have to knit them tighter for it to really look solid. Squirm is the yarn that like gives back. It springs into place and really fills in the textures. And I just love that about finding a yarn that really gives you more than what you thought it would in the skein. Like it's awesome colors, really squishy in the skein, but when you knit with it, it's even better. So uh, what, you, what you get with the honeycomb pattern with Squirm Sock is these really fulfilled stitches. They're just so dense and really pixelated. And yeah, they just have this, yeah, more, there's, yeah, there's more oomph to the fabric. And when that's on your feet, it just, Mm, it's so delightful. So Undercover Art or Squirm Sock, I can't say enough about it. I just love it. And when it's combined with Aiden's amazing dye colors, it's just too good to be true. So I combined one skein of Undercover Art or Squirm Sock with five Walk Collection mini skeins. So those of you that got mini skeins or leftover little yarn nuggets lying around in your stash, that's what these Painting Honeycomb socks are for. Yeah. Yes, these are socks. No, they are not Christmas stockings. They look pretty massive, but I promise you they're for my feet. This is like twice the size of some of my friend's socks. Like my friend Linda, she knit socks and they're like half this size. She could knit two socks with this much yarn. But yeah, that's my life. Big feet, big socks, more yarn. West Knits Year socks. So I'll get those Painting Honeycomb socks. That's the April sock. There's still a new sock to come every single month this year. So if you're not signed up for the uh, West Knits Year of socks, what are you knitting? What are you doing? There's even a How to Knit Socks workshop to teach you how to knit socks. So I just fell in love with socks and my whole world is socks, socks, socks. <gasps> But now dog sweaters, dog sweaters. It's just so much fun. I love when you find something with knitting and then you can take what you love from like previous projects and apply them to these new types of projects you're knitting. Like, do you remember if you knit sweaters, do you remember when you didn't knit sweaters? Like I used to be so intimidated by a sweater because I thought it took so much time and it does. But the thing about those people warning me about sweaters and how long they would take, they underestimated how obsessive I am and how much I love knitting. And you can make a sweater in like a couple weeks or a few weeks. But I remember somebody telling me a sweater would take like years and some of them do. I've made sweaters that, yeah, I just work a little bit, put them aside. But when you're really into that project, you can knit something big in a few weeks and you're like, what? That's amazing. And I just love when you can apply yeah, the things you love about knitting and then find a new form. So if you love color, now you can apply those fascinations to dog sweaters. And it just like triggers your brain and ignites your creativity and imagination in a different way. And I'm going off on a tangent here, but that's what these episodes are for. So yeah, make sure you have a drink, make sure you've got your knitting, because I'm still just getting started here. Yeah, I love knitting for so many reasons, but one of the main reasons is just how it adapts to your life and your highs and your lows. You can get really excited and be really happy and triggered by those bright colors. And if you're feeling lower or yeah, needing to stay at home and not so inspired by things, knitting kind of feeds you and comforts you in that calming meditative way. Well, that's why I love knitting. Let's get to some more knitting. Okay, let's get to some more knits. The Dustling Cardigan just came out today. And speaking of those like meditative, relaxing, soothing projects, 
This is the family of stitches that you've seen in the sweater and the hat and the Dustlin shawl. And finally, you've been asking for this. So many people have been asking me to do a Dustlin cardigan. So I modified the form and the stitches into a flat, uh, flat construction. So that means with a lot of those garter stitch stripes that you're doing in the Dustlin pattern, you get to knit instead of purl those rows. So with garter stitch in the round, you're like knitting around, purling around. With garter stitch flat, it's all knit stitches, which I really like. I prefer knitting to purling. I don't hate purling, I just like knitting more. So it's knit flat, and then you pick up and attach this button band in the center, and you've got the Dustlin cardigan. So it's knit top down, really easy to customize, and I just yeah, love the textures of this design because it's easy to memorize. Once you establish the stitch patterns, they're very simple stitch patterns, like a two row repeat or like a four stitch repeat, but there's just enough change happening that kind of keeps your interest. And I find it's just that magical mixture of relaxing and comforting. You can watch the TV and not be too stressed out, but there's enough to look forward to in each section so you don't abandon it like those. I never do that. We never abandon our projects. No, we just get inspired by new things. But uh, it's one of those projects that keeps you motivated along the way. This one I knit quite long, so it's really easy to customize the length. So my number one tip for this is just to try it on and really feel free to adapt where you're stopping each section. So if you want that yoke depth to be more shallow or longer and more relaxed, that's your opportunity to customize it for you. And I, after I finished this, especially because it was so long on me, it kind of goes down to my thigh. There's some really beautiful cropped versions for my test knitters too. So you can make it really small and cropped or really long and relaxed. And after I made it, I thought, oh, should I add some pockets to it? But I, I loved the simplicity and clean quality of this. I might leave it as it is, but maybe I need to make another one with like some afterthought pockets. What do you think? Have you done that before on your sweaters and cardigans where you add like a, you cut the fabric and add an afterthought pocket? I think I might need one. Maybe even like a color pop lining to the pocket would be really cool. But yeah, I have to think. I need to pick out a new West Wool color and knit another version. So this is done in the pebble colorway in West Wool Tandem. And we have lots of kits at Stephen and Penelope in all of our colorways. So if you want a kit, you just pick your size and then you'll get the number of skeins required for that size and then good to go. You just need to pick your color and then we'll send you all the yarn you need to knit your cardigan. So I'm really happy with this. It really adds more variety to that Dustlin family. We've got the sweater and a cowl and a shawl, the dog sweater coming soon. I think there's just a few more things later this year to add to the Dustlin. I think there needs to be a Dustlin blanket and maybe like a balaclava. I always mix it up. Is it balaclava or baklava? Baklava is edible. Balaclavable. Ba 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 balaclavable. Balaclava is an accessory. Maybe I need to research how to say the word before I go off and knit in something that I don't know what I'm saying. So what do you think needs to be Dustlin knitted? I think I've made my way through a lot of the garments, but definitely a blanket and then a head uh, sleeping bag, <laughs> something up there. So that's the Dustlin cardigan. And then what else is coming? I'm working on some new projects. Uh, every time I'm finishing something, I'm that type of knitter that works on something just with the idea to finish it so I can make the next thing. So while I'm knitting one thing in my head, I'm just like, okay, I love this, but I just can't wait till it's done so that I can cast on the next thing. So I want to give you a sneak preview. Stitchy, do you want to help me show off this new shawl? What about with the treat? We'll do anything for a snack. What? They're going to help me show off my new modular work in progress. Come on. So these dog sweaters, they're really like swatches. And I was just yeah, so inspired by making these little things because making a sweater for me takes a few weeks, but for them, I could do like a couple days for a little Stitches sweater. And I just made one for their little Chihuahua friend that like was half the size of Stitches. I was like, dogs need no yarn. 
it's like ridiculous how quick those projects are. So yeah, I think about like dog sweaters and socks the same way where they're kind of like filler projects or like in between projects. So while you're making your sweater, when you don't know what to cast on next, you're like working on your big sweater project and you're like, what do I cast on after this? Just cast on a dog sweater or a sock. You don't have to think about it. It goes really quick. It's like a palette cleanser of your knitting. Anyway, here's a sneak peek or like a full peek of one of these modular shawls I'm working on. And it's in that realm of that modular coloring shawls series that I started. And this will be one of the final shawls in that collection. So I just wanted to share like where I'm at with the design and what I think about when I'm designing things. So a lot of my designs, I like to recycle and reuse ideas, but in a new way. I see all of my designs and knitting in general is we're not inventing anything new. It's just a lot of theme and variation and you can just take one idea and expand upon it and it gets a new life when you add a new texture or shape or even a new color combination to a previous idea. It just becomes a new, a new visual world. So this is, I don't have a name for it yet. So if you have any name ideas, like what does this remind you of? To me, it's kind of like tiles. It's kind of a medallion. I don't know, kind of like a pinwheel. It's kind of like circus tenty right now, but I plan on filling in all of these shapes. So this is how I work on a lot of my designs. I kind of take it section by section and I borrowed this idea from my shawlography shawl, which had this similar short row stripe idea, but I kept it more simple and color blocked for this shawl. And I just, I wanted a, yeah, a quilt inspired kind of tile quilt patchwork looking shawl that was with fewer colors. Uh, it's still a lot of colors. There's four colors, but most of my modular shawls I've been doing with seven or more colors. So I wanted to bring it back down to four colors and I just love playing with the placement of colors and how they relate to each other. So I'm about halfway through, I think. I'm gonna fill in the negative space with some modular sections and maybe add another little rectangle but that's how I think about the design process is I take it section by section. And for me, that's a really freeing way to work because when you plan things out from the very beginning, I feel like, okay, you've planned it all out. You know where you're going. So what's the point of going if you already know where you're going? That's how I live my life is, yeah, make it up section by section. It's good to have a trajectory of where you're gonna go in your knitting and in life. But if you stick to that, I mean, can be a little boring, I think. So I like to be surprised by what could happen. Even if I think, maybe I think in my head, I think it's going that way, I'm pretty sure. I still like to knit with the possibility that anything could happen, anything could change. And that just keeps the excitement in the process and keeps you more in the moment rather than just, okay, I'm knitting, I know what I'm doing, I'm gonna put that color there, put that color there. It's like, where's the surprise? Where's, where's the moment, okay? So by making it up as you go, you're making the moment each section. So I, 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 I was kind of controlled by the colors. I knew the, what the colors were, but where they would go, it's a surprise. So I didn't draw this one out. It's really fun to see what happens because uh, yeah, you've got a general idea, but then as you put the colors where they go, the design starts to be revealed to you. So I really like that feeling of you're making something, but you're not like controlling it too much. It's kind of guiding you where it wants to go. And it's like a communication. You're having a talk back and forth with your project. Am I crazy? Or do you feel that way with your colors? It happens a lot when you're choosing colors, like where you're guiding where the colors go, but then you see something happen in the fabric that was like, oh, whoa, I didn't see that pattern emerge. I never planned that. And th that's when the project speaks to you and goes, Ooh, I'm showing off for you. Look what I can do. And then you're like, whoa, hello project. I recognize your beauty. I'm getting inspired by that. And that's gonna inform my next decision that I didn't even know I would make earlier. So that's how I design my projects. That's a peek into my world. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, honestly what I think about. I'm sharing my inner dialogues of when I'm knitting with you. So I hope I'm not the only one. Do you feel the same? Anyway, that's what's going on in my world now. It's full of cuteness, full of dog sweaters. I'm really loving these modular quilt-inspired shawls, 
and socks. These socks have just made me so happy this year. So I hope that these projects and patterns are giving you some inspiration. If you're looking for any other ideas, there's a lot to see over at Westnitz and on Ravelry. And yeah, I just can't wait to see how you transform these ideas that I put so much passion into. I'm just so excited to see your color combinations. And maybe, maybe we'll even see a cat wear one of these sweaters. Do you think a cat would be happy in one of these? I don't know. If you can get a cat in a sweater, let me know how that goes. Get a picture if you can, if you don't get your hands clawed apart. And maybe there's a cat out there that might want a sweater. I don't know. I've never met one that likes to wear sweaters, so. These are for the pooches. There's gonna be more coming this year. And I just can't wait to see how you transform all these ideas. So let me know again in the comments down below if there's any other Dustland ideas you wanna see. And in this dog sweater form, this is what I'm most curious about. What do you want your dogs covered in? Do you want more texture? Do you want some other marled sweater ideas? Some other color work? What Westnitz sweaters and shawls do you wanna see puppified? So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I just love getting to share what I'm working on and what's been coming out. All the links and things I talked about, you can see down below. And uh, anytime there's something new coming out, I always share some newsletters. So at westnits.com, you can always sign up for what's new in the woolly world of Westnits, what new patterns there are. There's always new workshops coming down in the coming year. So I'll share all of those in my newsletter. So what do you think, Stitch? Should we call it, call it a day? Should I go knit you another sweater? Ugh, ugh. We just film, finished filming the brioche workshop and we just finished taking pictures. You're a professional model now. So we're gonna find some new projects to cast on and not abandon our other ones. But let's go get inspired, shall we, Stitch? Yeah, let's go. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.